yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, next, it's going to be sharing by co-explorers. Uh, I request Dr. Sweeti from Faculty of Science and Humanities to share his exploration. Good morning, everyone. I will not take much of your time. Uh, I would like to start uh, by thanking Dr. Supraja first because uh, we were getting mails continuously regarding UHV ICEL and regarding attending the UHV FDPs. But she took her time out and once came to FSH and explained what UHV was all about. So initially when I started my UHV journey, I just thought of it as a FDP, which is mandated which might help with my appraisals. So let me start it and uh, started attending it. UHP when want, it just went like that. I got my certificate and certain things, yes, it did have an impact. Then started UHV 2. So it really did make a difference. So I will, my, I am a work in progress. So the journey is not complete. I still have my flaws and I'm still working on them. So the first thing that I realized was that I am responsible for my happiness and my content or whatever. So the happiness that you feel comes from within. Nobody else can be responsible for your happiness or your sadness. And uh, the first thing that um, touched me most was trust as a foundation value for your family. Uh, being parents of teenagers is very, very difficult task. And the first thing that I used to do was constantly check on my children without their knowledge, checking their, <laughs> checking their phones, checking their social media accounts, because I'm scared of what they might get into. You hear so many news regarding what might happen. So as a parent, I assumed that it was my job to constantly monitor them. And then um, we were talking about trust. Okay, and in one of the sharing sessions, they said that it is a foundation value for all the relationships in your family. And I was sadly lacking in that with my own children. And um, so I just took some time out to them and I started explaining why I feel that your social media presence and your, you know, being online all the time or what you post. I tried to explain to them what the problem was and being from a computer science background, you get all kinds of, you know, doubts when you start sharing things online. So I started discussing with them. So initially, of course, they were not okay with it because they are in a new generation where they feel that they have to share everything online. And then I started telling them and I started reducing my online presence. I thought that was the best way in which I could deal with what they are going through. So if I'm going to be constantly on the phone, constantly posting what I do online, and it is not going to help. So I started cutting down my time and my presence and slowly I saw that it was impacting them. And I constantly kept telling them, I'm not going to do all this. I'm not going to check on you. I trust you implicitly. I have raised you. You are now, you know, in a stage where I think you can make right decisions on your own and I am going to trust you implicitly. So always before you do something, think about what will Amma think when something goes wrong or how will I say about this to Amma? Okay, anything that you feel that you cannot share with me, then I think that it is certainly wrong. And if I am doing something that I cannot share with you, then I think that I am being wrong in that factor. And uh, slowly, as a family, we have definitely gone down on our TV time, online time, uh, and we have started, you know, discussing, we've brought back the habit of sitting together for dinner, irrespective of wherever we are. We have decided that 8.30, all of us are going to sit along with their grandparents. Previously, it used to be different, different time. Everyone will walk in and walk out as they please. But that is a little bit of success that I have tasted. And I was very, very happy when on Friday, my daughter messaged me and said that, uh, actually, I am not going to go to college. You know, I'm actually going to go for a break with my friends outside because, you know, I have do not have anything in the afternoon. Previously, she never used to tell me. She said, I just wanted to let you know because you will be thinking that I am here. And actually, I am not in that place just for you to know. So that is a little bit of something that I have achieved with my family. The next one was with my colleagues. Um, 
I used to, in my imagination, think that whatever, you know, paper publications that you do or whatever conferences that you attend or all the workshops that you attend, they are going to give you a one-upmanship over all your colleagues. And the amount of things that you do over here academically is going to increase the respect or my stature in my department or in my university level. And uh, I used to be very secretive about these things. I never used to tell them what workshops I was going to or even if I read a mail and register for something, I'd never let them do. That is how I did UHV1. I never even told my best friends that I was doing UHV1. <laughs> so when I got it and you know, I just somewhere realized that, okay, this is going to be important in the future. So let's do it. And I didn't even tell my colleagues or the people who sit next to me and share my lunch with me every day that I am into something. They all just realized even when I was doing it online listening doing the polls they were asking me what are you doing is just, just an FTP <laughs> that was my response to them and uh, these days I am still a work in progress <laughs> okay so I understood that it is not actually so it is not a competition constant competition with all of them that is just in my imagination and whatever FDPs are complete or of course my knowledge will definitely improve but I have stopped seeing them as a competition. We are all trying to survive here. We are all trying to go towards the common goal, which is, you know, improve the university ranking or better yourself in terms of your knowledge that you gather. And they are not my competitions. So these days, I try not to be like that. I try to share whatever information that I get, which I know that it is important. That is one role. Uh, this being selfish and thinking that this is my, you know, goal or this is how I'm going to improve my stature. I completely understand that it is from my own imagination and that is how it is. And uh, one more thing that I have already shared it in our UHV meeting as well. Uh, certain preconditionings that we have, all right, uh, like uh, this is regarding the maid that I have at my home. Last time when we came for UHV too, Supraja ma'am was sharing something that uh, to all the helpers that we have, the food that we give is always the leftovers. When we call them first and we give it to them, uh, they are very happy because we are seeing them as at the same level as us. They are similar to us. So this was going on at the back of my mind and one day I just realized that the coffee that I serve to my maid and the food that I give her, I give it in a separate plate which is basically very wrong as a fellow person. If she is not going to come at 5.30 and do my household chores, it is impossible for me to catch the bus at 6.45 and land over here at 8.30. It is impossible. She is actually facilitating me. She does have a family and she does come here and she is helping me to achieve my goals. And I personally felt very, very bad about it. And from that day onwards, whenever I make coffee for myself, I do not give her at the last. I make it for her as well because I cannot start my day without a coffee. So uh, as soon as she comes in, I will be having my cup and I will give it to her and I have stopped having separate plates for her and I have stopped giving her leftovers because I clearly realized that she is similar to me and she is facilitating me as a fellow human being to achieve my goals. These are some areas in my life where UHV has played a very very crucial role and as I am saying I am still a work in progress and I have uh, lots to you know understand and achieve and but still as I was discussing with Dr. Satish too in the morning I said still that anger that you know sometimes the helplessness it does come but at that point or the way you behave to your fellow people in your own department it changes but that UHV acts as a checkpoint don't do that you are being you know very selfish don't do that it does help to check in a lot of levels and I'm very very thankful to SRMIST for facilitating the UHV cell and providing us with so many opportunities to explore ourselves and of course Dr. Supraja for helping us in the journey thank you very much